Billy Sunday, he's an old time preacher, he preached the message in 1916. He said, the saloon is the sum of all, that, all villainies. It is worse than war or pestilence. It is the crime of crimes. It is the parent of crimes and the mother of sins. It is the appalling source of misery and crime in the land and to license such an incarnate fiend of hell is the dirtiest, low-down, damnable business on top of this old earth. There is nothing to be compared to it. This is what Christians used to think of drinking strong drink. If Billy Sunday were alive today, he'd be absolutely shocked to see the acceptance of booze within Christianity. It's disgusting. Unfortunately now, it's hard to find Christians that stay away from strong drink and the local saloon. You know, they're not even called saloons these days. They're called pubs and clubs. That's what they're called. But the content of what they promote and sell is still the same. And maybe even worse. Now, the majority of now, like these days, the majority of Christians think it's strange if you say you don't drink alcohol. They think it's strange. And I'm not talking about a little drop in the cough syrup. I'm not talking about that little sprinkle that gets thrown in the trifle that feeds 20 people. I'm not talking about that. Drinking, you know, uh, drinking strong drink, you know, uh, these people that want to drink strong drink and justify it, they always justify it by that little bit that's thrown in the trifle to feed 15 people. You know, or that little drop in the medicine. Oh, well, see, you know, you can, you can, you can ingest it, see, so it's okay. They're just doing that to justify drinking their strong drink. They just want to put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. They want to justify it in some way so they can turn the grace of God into the lasciviousness. That's why they do it. For example, I was reading on the Salvation Army website, I don't mind saying this because they put it on their website, so it's public knowledge, so I don't mind publicly exposing what they're saying. But they say, quote, we seek to partner with LGBTIQA plus people and allies to work with us to build an inclusive, accessible and culturally safe environment in every aspect of Salvation Army organisation and services. Everyone has a right to feel safe and respected. Now, I don't care how they try to be politically correct and using words like inclusive and safe and culturally and environment, respected, accessible, all these words. They're just terms to try and cover up what, they're really, what they've really done. And that's roll over to the culture of the world which is against God and against his ways. They say they want to partner, partner with them and, and, and their allies. Partner with the allies, partner with them and their allies. That's the LGBTIQA+. When were Christians told to partner with lesbians and homosexuals? When were Christians told to partner with bisexuals, transsexuals, queers, asexuals, which just means anything goes, and the plus at the end, which means whatever else you just want to add to that. It doesn't matter. That's what the plus means. It's an abomination. It's an abomination. You know, someone might say, oh, but, you know, they do a lot of good work. You know, they feed a lot of homeless and so on. I'm not saying they're not. Good. But don't say you're a Christian. But what's with partnering with lasciviousness and lust? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 18 says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Look at this. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Look at this. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel. What part? Yet they're partnering, partnering with them. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. 
God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, look at this, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And I'll be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and, and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So you can't claim to have Jesus Christ and yet partner with this ungodly world. But that's what we're seeing today. That's what we're seeing in, in Christendom today. You know, Christians today not even reading their Bible, not even knowing what it says about these things. They, they wouldn't even know what God says about these things. Either that, or they know exactly what the Bible says about these things, and they're just willingly going against it. And they just don't care anymore. 